afternoon. Today we are going to learn about corrosion. Okay, let us see what is corrosion. So we have frequently heard the word corrosion, and we also know that usually iron rusts and it gets corroded. So what is this corrosion, and how does it occur? Why is it disadvantageous to us? All this we'll be learning now. Okay. So when we observe the metal structures, usually all the structures are made up of metals. Why are they made up of metals? Because of their strength. Metals have high strength. Then they are very flexible, so malleable and ductile. Because of its strength, malleability and ductility, metals are used to make structures. But these metals will react with the atmospheric gases in presence or absence of humidity, that is water, to give us some compounds. When these metals convert into metal oxides, what happens is the strength of this metal decreases when they come convert into metal oxides. So metal oxides or metal compounds are not useful to us. So we have to prevent the conversion of metal into metal oxides or other compounds of the metals. Usually metals exist in nature as ores. Ores are nothing but compounds of these metals. These ores are extracted. That means we supply lots of energy and extract to give us metals. Now, these metals do not exist in nature as metals, but as ores. That means the stable form of metals is ores. But we are using refining and removing all the oxides and converting them into metals which are very reactive. So what happens is these metals which are formed from the ores are highly reactive. When they react, they give us metal oxides. Okay? So that is called as corrosion. So in general we can define corrosion as the destructive deterioration of metals due to chemical or electrochemical reaction with atmospheric gases in presence of water or in absence of water. This is called as corrosion. It is called as unwanted because if metals get corroded then they will not have the strength required. Now basically corrosion is explained by two theories. One is called dry or chemical corrosion and the other is called as wet or electrochemical corrosion. So here the dry corrosion is also called as chemical corrosion and wet corrosion is called as electrochemical corrosion. So as the name indicates dry corrosion occurs in absence of humidity. That is why it is called as dry corrosion. This dry corrosion is again classified into three types. We have oxidation corrosion, then corrosion by other gases and liquid metal corrosion. So dry corrosion occurs in absence of moisture and it is classified into three types. One is oxidation corrosion, corrosion by other gases and liquid metal corrosion. So this oxidation corrosion occurs in presence of atmospheric oxygen and absence of moisture. There is no moisture required for this type of corrosion. Corrosion by other gases means other than oxygen in presence of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, chloride, all these gases also in the absence of moisture will react with different metals and give corrosion. Then liquid metal corrosion. Here this is called by molten metals. Okay. So first let us consider oxygen. 
oxidation corrosion so coming to oxidation corrosion this occurs when the metal reacts with atmospheric oxygen so usually metals are unstable as metals so they get converted into metal ions releasing electrons and this atmospheric oxygen will take up the n electrons released by the metal and gives us oxides o2 minus so this oxide reacts with the metal to give us metal oxide these metal oxides do not have any properties that the metals have now these oxides again are of different types how these what is the mechanism of the formation of these oxides and what are the different types of oxide layers that are formed and uh, how are they helpful for protection or destruction of the metal we will see now let us consider a metal block of all the four sides only one side is ex exposed to the atmosphere let us say this is exposed to the atmosphere so here what happens is metal some amount of metal very little amount of metal converts into metal ions releasing electrons there is atmospheric oxygen this this oxygen will take up the electrons released by the metal okay and forms metal oxide mn m2 on and forms a layer here so initially the top surface which is exposed to the atmospheric oxygen will form a metal oxide layer now when this metal oxide layer is formed what happens it will act as a block between the atmospheric oxygen and the metal ions so actually the corrosion should stop but it doesn't happen so what happens is if this layer has some force the size of the metal ion is very small so it will penetrate it will go through the holes and come in contact with the oxygen once it comes in contact with the oxygen it will form metal oxide so in this manner the metal ions formed on the metal block will react with the atmospheric oxygen by diffusing onto the upper layer and form metal oxides this is the mechanism of oxidation corrosion okay now once this oxide layer is formed it can be protective or it can be non protective we will see what kind of oxide will be protective and what will be non protective we have four types of oxide layers being formed one is stable stable oxide layer unstable oxide layer porous oxide layer and volatile oxide layer okay so in the stable oxide layer what happens is the metal oxide formed is very stable so it will cover the surface of the metal block then once it covers the surface it will not allow the metal ions inside metal ions to come out and get exposed to the atmospheric oxygen so since there is no further exposure of the metal to the atmospheric oxygen the corrosion will not occur further so the metal oxide layer formed will prevent the for the corrosion then we have unstable oxide layer in this case what happens is the metal reacts with oxygen to give us metal oxide but this metal oxide is not stable so what happens it will convert back into metal and oxygen so such type of metal oxide is called unstable metal oxide so when it is unstable what is happening the metal oxide is getting converted back into metal and oxygen so here there is no disruption of the metal the metal is existing 
as the metal. Although it is reacting with oxygen, the oxide formed is unstable, so it will give back metal and oxygen. So, unstable kind of metal oxide layer will protect the metal. The metal will not be destructive. Then coming to porous layer, if it is porous, what will happen? There will be some holes in the metal oxide layer formed. That means the metal oxide layer formed is not efficient enough or the size of the metal oxide form is smaller than that of the size of the metal. So what happens? It will not be able to cover the surface completely. Since it is not able to cover surface completely, the cracks or the pores present in this oxide layer will allow the metal ion to come onto the surface and react with the atmospheric oxygen. So, this corrosion will not be visible to our eye, but the inside parts will also be slowly corroded. So, this type of corrosion is very, very, very harmful. Then we have volatile. Volatile oxide layer. So what happens is when the metal oxide or metal reacts with oxygen, it will form metal oxide which is volatile. Volatile means it will vaporize. It will not stay in the solid form. It is more stable in the vapor form. So it will immediately get converted into, into vapor. So once the vapor is formed, can this vapor protect? No, it will escape into the atmosphere. So Fresh layer, fresh layer of the metal will be exposed to the environment. So when fresh layer is exposed, this will again react with oxygen and the metal oxide formed will vaporize. So in this manner, the complete destruction of the metal will occur in case of volatile layer. So out of the four types of oxidative layers we have, the stable is the best one which can protect from further collision. Then unstable means that type of metals will not get corroded at all. Porous and volatile. These two types of oxide layers are very very dangerous. Okay. Now, to know whether the metal oxide form is protective or unprotective, we have a rule called the filling bedwell rule. So what does it say? It tells us, uh, tells us, uh, tells us about the protective nature of the oxide layer form. So, if the volume of the metal oxide formed is equal to or greater than the volume of the metal, then it will act as protective layer. That means if the ratio of volume of the metal oxide formed by the volume of the metal is equal to or greater than 1, then such type of oxide layers will act as protective oxide layers. But if it is less than 1, then it will act as unprotective layer. Okay, thank you for today. So today we learned about what is corrosion, the two theories of corrosion which are dry corrosion and wet corrosion. Out of that we were discussing types of dry corrosion. Under dry corrosion we saw three types. One is oxidative corrosion, the other one is corrosion by other gases and then liquid metal corrosions. In that we were discussing the oxidative corrosion. In this case we have again four types of oxidation layer being formed and how which type of uh, layer is protective and what is the rule that tells us about the protection. So the spilling bedwork rule is very important to know whether the oxidative layer is corrosive or non-corrosive.